middle of the day. My kids are eating lunch. Baby chick drama has taken over my life is what it feels like. These baby chicks. Okay, there's such a thing as beginner's luck because the first batch of baby chicks that we had, which is just three, uh, were raised out with the rest of the chickens. There were no problems. There was no drama. It was so easy. I was like, this is easy. But um, this, this has not been going easy. So we've been having some chickens fighting. We had some baby chicks get hurt, which is why they are now um, in different places. So I'll show you. Oh, and just so you know, all the baby chicks are fine. They're fine. So don't get upset. I was upset enough when, when it happened, but they're fine. Okay, so currently in the coop is Pepper and her baby. I have it blocked off. You can see the actual entrance to the house is blocked off with that. And then the chickens who want to go in and lay eggs can just jump in through here, which they do. Sugar Puff and her baby are all the way out here in my garden right now. And I've been keeping a close eye on them. I can hear them. Can you hear them? I guess they're over under this peony. Ooh, that's little baby fluff. I'm not, not really trying to scare them out of there because I want them to be undercover and just away from the other chickens. And then, and then Ducky and her baby are in the house in a tote. So certainly, not gonna lie, this whole baby chick thing has added a certain dimension of stress onto my life that I really don't want right now. We're not gonna be doing chickens again. I mean, we'll keep the chickens, but we're not gonna hatch out chicks again, at least not for a very long time. Just trying to take a breather in the garden. Let's see some happy things like bees on milkweed. And I know these are, you know, not really friendly for my cabbages, but they're so pretty. They really are. I like them. I'm sure many of you relate. I really feel like the garden is kind of just like a good, it's like a sanctuary. You can go in just slow down. When you're in the garden, you just kind of slow down. And I think it's from just looking at the different animals you know, the bees and the butterflies and, and the plants. And you, you really just have to take a breath. It's very calming. So besides food, grow, grow a garden because it is good for your mental health, honestly. I am kind of waiting for things to kind of fill in, though. Like the tomatoes. I feel like the more height you have in a garden and the more flowers and just greenery in general, it'll feel a lot cooler because, guys, it is hot out. It has been really hot out. And I don't want to sit out here in the middle of the day necessarily, but I think I will once things grow a little bit bigger. I think it'll feel a lot cooler. Right now it just kind of feels like a field, which I mean, essentially that's what it is. Found this guy growing in my compost and I just kind of put him out here and I think it'll be okay. He just needs a lot of water and a little bit of time to get over the transplant uh, shock shock of transplanting and look guys some of my it's one of my nasturtiums is coming up that i direct sowed i think i'm gonna try to direct sow a bunch of stuff in the fall to hopefully come up in the spring we're just gonna do it it's gonna be an experiment because i find when things are in the ground earlier and then if they actually make it to germinate and start growing in the spring they come up so much faster and grow so much better than than if I try to start stuff, which didn't even work this year, or try to put stuff out late. I feel like sometimes actually I don't realize that it's time to plant something until I see a volunteer of that plant in my garden. And then I'm like, oh crap, look at that. I, I was supposed to plant those, wasn't I? Kind of like that squash. I, I have squash seeds that are still germinating. They just now came up and I only planted them because I saw that and was like, ah, gotta get that out. It's one trap you don't want to fall into which I find myself falling into a lot as comparison, even with the garden, because the garden is such a, such a happy place and such a sanctuary and such a peaceful place. But then I will look at other people's gardens or gardens in magazines. Not that I even see magazines, I guess it'd be online. Gardens online, gardens on Instagram or even YouTube. And I think like, wow, that looks really great. Or I just come up with ideas for what I want to do in the garden. And I'm not there yet. And 
they take time to implement and it also takes years to figure out the rhythm of planting and what you can grow and every year is different so it always takes time but I find myself being very discouraged with my own garden because I am comparing it to other people's gardens and that is that is not okay. And that's that's the point I'm at already. Like we haven't even gotten, I haven't even gotten my first tomato yet. And I'm already like, well, next year, next year, I'll do so much better. Next year it will look amazing. But the struggle is that that's fine. And I think that's good. And it's good to plan for next year, but I don't want to get to a point where I abandon my current garden in favor of a garden that doesn't even exist yet. You know, like I need to focus on what I have and really work with that. Uh, these really need to go in the ground like ASAP. We got these cuttings from a friend and we've already planted some in the ground, but these, yeah, right, right before I was about to put them in the ground, then we're like, well, should we really put these here? Maybe we shouldn't have them here. So then of course it's like procrastination. Where are we gonna put them? I'm gonna put them here. <laughs> if we need to move them, we'll move them later because otherwise they're just gonna die in those pots. But I feel like a lot of my gardening efforts were good go better if I already had a space for these plants before I get them. <laughs> and then if I could commit to that space and actually put them there, it would work really well. And I think that's part of gardening. I just started this year. This, even this garden, our vegetable garden, I'm still not sure that I want it right here. Look at it. I mean, it's here. It's here. It's been here for years. This is where it is. But I'm still like, is that really where I want this? Should we really commit to having it right there? Well, that's where it is. Why can't I just be like, yes, that's that's where it's going. That's where it's going to be forever. Now I feel like I'm kind of rambling, so I'm going to sum this up and bring it bring it back together for the end of this. So the two things I would say are, number one, enjoy the mess. Enjoy what you have. Enjoy it. The chickens, even though it's stressful, I'm enjoying them. I like them. Enjoy my garden, even though it's a mess. I'm going to enjoy it. I like it. I'm, I'm thankful for it. And then my second second point of this whole video would be have a place to put things before you get them and then just commit to it and that goes with my garden plants and it goes for chickens too because now I would would have gone a lot better if I had multiple uh, spaces where I could sequester these these hens with these chicks and that might not even be really feasible because I'm not going to build like three separate coops just for these chickens but I mean it kind of all works out in the end but there you have it, a disorganized talk from a disorganized mind. I hope your day is going well. Until next time, remember that alligators can only run in a straight line fast, so if you're running away from an alligator, go zigzag.